Now to breaking news. Thousands of anti-Trump protesters are marching in cities across the country tonight from San Francisco to New York for a second day in a row. This is a live look at one of the demonstrations happening now. Heather Bosch is monitoring developments from the King 5 breaking news desk. Heather. All right, we're having some problems uh, hearing uh, Heather, so let's just jump in here. This is Maryland. Um, so far, things have remained peaceful. We've been tracking this for about the past hour or so. People in the streets walking through traffic right now. We'll keep tabs on this and uh, have more and break down other protests across the country again for the second night in a row. So we're going to take another look here at Baltimore, Maryland, where there is an anti-Trump protest going on. These protesters have been marching now for a couple hours. Uh, this is the second night of such marches in different cities in our country. Tonight, there is also a protest going on in San Francisco. Welcome back. Breaking news in Portland right now. A protest is gathering right now in Pioneer Courthouse Square. A group calling itself Portland's Resistance is gathered there. Um, we're being told that they possibly could be on the move in short order, which could cause bus and other transportation problems in Portland. This is the third straight night of protests in Portland after the election, including election night. There were protests there, so Portland, one of several cities around the country, with protests again after the election. Order. For the second night in a row, anti-Trump protests are underway all over the country. You are looking live at Portland right now. Protesters are in the Lloyd District. According to our sister station, KGW, a newly formed group called Portland's Resistance organized that rally. And KGW also reporting that police are considering tonight a riot due to, quote, extensive criminal and dangerous behavior. There's been multiple reports of vandalism happening in Portland. Meanwhile, this is Oakland, another night of protests there. Live look at downtown, where earlier nearly a 1,000 people had gathered. Uh, right now, much smaller crowd appears to be out there. The Oakland Police Department trying to get protesters to go home after they held a peaceful rally at Oakland's Frank H. Ogawa Plaza turned violent. We want to get to a live picture right now in Portland for the second day. In fact, in Portland, it's really a third night of this. Anti-Trump protests are underway. Uh, and here's what's happening in Portland right now. Police calling this a riot due to extensive criminal and dangerous behavior. Protesters have been smashing windows in the Pearl District. 19 cars have been smashed by protesters, according to uh, our sister station, KGW. And uh, Portland police now say that protesters are arming themselves with rocks. Let's listen in to Mike Benham. Uh, some experienced protesters, maybe some of the faces of this movement, uh, moved in this situation, de-escalated it, and are holding her on the ground right now, intending to her. So she may have actually gotten some of the substance in her own eyes. So. Uh, and on her own body. So, uh, you know, you hate to see stuff like this, but uh, we've been reporting on this for over 48 hours. Motorists are frustrated. They're trying to get home. They're trying to get to work. And these protesters are getting in the way. I'll send it back to you guys. Okay, so as you've been hearing, that's uh, Mike Better, who's on the ground right now with these protesters who are clearly blocking traffic. Uh, we're hearing that they are in the Pearl District right now. Uh, multiple acts of vandalism have been reported. Uh, protesters tagging buildings and then these reports of windows being smashed by these masked protesters. Uh, this is a really active scene tonight. We're going to keep an eye on it. Uh, bring you the latest as we get it. Okay. We want to move to Oakland now, Oakland, California. This is a, a shot from one of the helicopters there above the scene. You can see a lot of lights down below. So let's fill you in on what's going down down below as the choppers starting to zoom in for you. Protesting is continuing right here in Oakland. Tension continues to grow. We're hearing that folks, we're hearing reports that folks are breaking windows of businesses and cars and and setting fires there. Hundreds of protesters gathered in downtown Oakland tonight. This is for the third night of demonstrations, and this is all against Donald Trump's election as president of the United States. Uh, we're seeing reports that an estimated 7,000 people protested on Wednesday night. Demonstrators grew violent. Police even had to use tear gas, 
flashbang grenades, and protesters were told through rocks, bottles, and fireworks. Now, according to the Oakland Police Department, one officer was treated and released from the hospital. This was Wednesday night. We're also told that two others were treated and released in the field late Wednesday night, uh, early Thursday morning. So again, tension continuing to grow in places like Portland and also in places like where you're looking at right now, which is Oakland, California. Okay, we're going to keep an eye on uh, both these situations. We'll be back after this break. We're getting back to live pictures right now. This is in Oakland, and uh, this is where we're getting reports that police are trying to contain protesters, boxing them in to prevent them from getting onto Interstate 580. Uh, these are the anti-Trump protesters who have been out in Oakland. This is the third night for them. They were out in the early morning hours following uh, the election results, and then out again last night where things really got violent. Forty fires were set. Police. Uh, we're using tear gas last night and tonight uh, they are trying to keep these folks from getting onto the interstate and you can see traffic there just at an absolute standstill as uh, clearly these protesters are on the road in Oakland, California. Again, we're keeping an eye on all of this and uh, we'll bring you up to speed. A live look at Portland right now where this anti-Trump protest, a third night of protests in Portland has really taken a turn. Portland police are now warning the crowd that gas and flares are being prepared. They are telling peaceful protesters who want to exercise their freedom of speech to go to Pioneer Square. Uh, they say, and I quote, this is from their Twitter account, those not wanting to be associated with anarchists should leave the area immediately. Uh, police have declared a riot in Portland tonight. Uh, they say that there has been excessive or extensive criminal and dangerous behavior. We've heard reports of windows being smashed and uh, all kinds of graffiti happening as well. Uh, a lot of these protesters out there are masked. Yeah, and we are continuing to follow more breaking news for you. Let's uh, switch up our, our camera shot here. We want to take you to Oakland, California tonight. It's all around people protesting. Again, we've been telling you about this the last couple of days, protesting Donald Trump being elected as president. We are seeing reports that hundreds of protesters gathered in downtown Oakland tonight for a third night of demonstrations. An estimated 7,000 people protested Wednesday night. We're hearing demonstrators grew violent. Police had to use tear gas, even flashbang grenades to try and disperse the crowd. We are learning that protesters threw rocks, bottles, and fireworks. And we've been following the, uh, the Twitter handle for Oakland Police Department and also Bay Area. We can tell you one tweet from the uh, NBC Bay Area is saying protesters are near San Jose Airport. We will try to keep you updated. Just uh, continue to watch us on Kong at 10 o'clock. We'll see you shortly. And we continue to follow a situation that's really bubbled up uh, into a concern here in Portland. These are protests following the election of Donald Trump this week. Uh, this is a live look, kind of walking with some of the protesters, and we've seen some broken store windows. We've seen dumpsters being set on fire. And at this point, the real concern we're hearing from Portland police is that there are some anarchists in this group who are uh, now picking up objects like rocks. Um, and, of course, we've seen that be used as weapons in the past so you understand that these situations can turn from a protest into a riot and a dangerous situation pretty quickly. I know, David, you're following them as well. Yeah, this is a really interesting situation because you have a bunch of people in the crowd that are confronting the anarchists saying, hey, stop damaging uh, property. The anarchists are refusing to do that. And so police have now told the crowd, if you want to exercise your free speech, please go to Pioneer Square in Portland, gather there so we can arrest the other people. So right now they're uh, making plans to move in and to take those in custody that are breaking windows or causing problems. They've already uh, notified them that this is an unlawful gathering. So they're kind of setting all the things in place. And they say some of the protesters there um, are creating gas and flares. Um, and so they're, they're seeing that there's going to be a serious public safety here uh, as they arm themselves. And, and uh, we, see, we saw a dumpster that was set on fire a little bit earlier with some um, vulgar language sprayed on it. So uh, you can see broken windows here. Again, this is live in Portland tonight where the anti-Trump protesters are out. Uh, but anarchists have joined this group, and that's who's causing all of the damage uh, to the buildings. Um, what they're trying to do is limit any damage to people uh, to keep any of the citizens that want to exercise their uh, right to free speech um, and are there lawfully um, to keep them to have the opportunity to be able to do it. And at the same time, uh, take the anarchists who, who will 
insinuate themselves into the crowd and thread themselves uh, through the crowd of the normal protesters that are just out there to try to get their message out. Yeah, this is something we're very familiar with in Seattle. We've seen a number of protests uh, that look uh, a lot like this. However, we had 5,000 people walking through the streets of Seattle last night, and we did not have any damage. Uh, there were no arrests made. It was a peaceful protest. Um, however, Today, in the last 24 hours, we have seen protests not just in Portland, but in L.A., in Chicago, in D.C., a number of cities uh, where we have seen arrests and we have seen some vandalism and violence. Um, this one is the one we're watching, I guess, the closest to home tonight and has police concerned, as David mentioned. The camera's uh, bumping around. We're going to keep our eye on this situation there, and mm -hmm. as we learn more, uh, we'll keep dipping back in and fill you in on what we're hearing from Portland. Well, we're going to start with tonight. Anti-Trump protesters voicing their anger at Donald Trump's election. CNN's Dan Simon is in Oakland, California. Ana Cabrera is in Denver for us. We're going to begin with you, Ana. Let's start with uh, what's going on there, what's happening where you are, what are protesters saying, what do they want? Well, Don, they want to make sure their voice is heard. They don't want to feel oppressed and they don't want to feel discriminated against. There are a lot of different groups who have been offended by Donald Trump throughout the course of the campaign. And they're now marching through downtown Denver. Thousands of people who have come out this afternoon and well into the evening hours now. We've been going for about four hours alongside these protesters. It started at the state capitol. We're hearing some of these chants like, no justice. No peace, and we're also hearing a lot of other peaceful messages um, that are relating to other groups who are part of this crowd, from the LGBT community to women who want to express themselves and say that there is not a place for sexism in our country. They, we've heard from a lot of Latinos in the crowd who are concerned about the immigration rhetoric from Donald Trump. We've heard from Black Lives Matter here. We've heard a lot of chants coming together, trying to find a unified voice of acceptance and compassion. Shante is one of the protesters here with me, carrying signs like this. Not my president. Shante, why do you feel this way? We're going backwards. If we keep him in, in the house, we're going backwards. It's not, it's not the America that I want to be a part of, and it's not the America that I represent. What's the message here tonight? The message here is that the people want to be heard. The popular vote wasn't listened to, so now we're out on the streets trying to make sure that we're being heard. What's the, the goal? I mean, the goal is to get him out of there. The goal is to make sure that trans people are protected, that black people are protected, that Muslims are protected, that women are protected, and that our voice is heard because this exactly this is what democracy looks like. Shante, thanks for talking with us. We really appreciate it. There you have it, Don. Again, we've seen people of all walks of life here among the crowd tonight. Back to you. All right, Anna, to Oakland now, where Dan Simon is. Dan, what are you seeing there? I would echo exactly what Anna was saying in terms of the people who are at that rally where she is. You're hearing. We can hear him. We can hear you, Dan. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. All right. I, 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 I apologize, Don. Uh, I want to talk, talk to this gentleman right here. This is Manuel Corona. You can see uh, his sign, single father, taxpayer, undocumented, afraid. Can you tell me what's All right. Dan, stand by. Uh, we'll get back to Dan when he fixes that. For the second straight night, thousands of people across the nation are taking to the streets, protesting the election of Donald Trump. This is a live look at Portland tonight, where police are saying this turned from a protest to a riot. And we are following other protests all across the country. As you can see on the top left of your screen, uh, Oakland and police officers, it appears, are on the freeway. Uh, this is the second night that protesters have made their way onto a freeway. On the bottom left of your screen, Los Angeles, and you can see uh, protesters there as well have spilled into the streets. Uh, we have seen vandalism and broken glass outside businesses across the country, specifically in Portland tonight, uh, a situation that we are watching very closely. Yeah, they're telling 
telling people in that crowd that if you want to exercise your free speech, please go to the Pioneer Square area of Portland. The anarchists are going to be arrested. Police are getting ready to move in because they say they've been picking up rocks from construction sites. They've been breaking windows and they've been uh, creating flares to set fires. And so this is a live look down on the streets in Portland where this crowd has grown tonight. And it's been going on for several hours as some of the people in this crowd are uh, bent on causing chaos and a lot of damage and police are warning them, uh, telling them both on social media and in person that you need to stop this right now and if you are a legitimate protester trying to get your message out, your free speech, to get out of this area and go to the Pioneer Square area and those that remain, the anarchists, they're going to arrest them. The people in the crowd have been telling the anarchists, stop breaking windows. So there's been some, some uh, verbal uh, backlash between the two groups uh, as the evening progresses. So some chaos there. Yeah, so situation that we oftentimes see in Seattle uh, when protests uh, get out of control. However, uh, we had a large protest here last night. 5,000 people marched from Westlake to uh, UW, and it was a peaceful protest. And then by the end of the night, the numbers diminished, and uh, everyone went home uh, calmly and safely. There were no arrests and no vandalism. Unfortunately, that is not the scene that we are seeing in Portland tonight. As we were watching earlier, some of the protesters picking up rocks, we've seen many broken and windows outside businesses uh, so folks tomorrow when they wake up in Portland are going to have a lot to clean up as police try to get this situation under control. We're going to watch all of these protests happening across the, the country and this closest one to us in Portland and bring you updates as we get them into the newsroom. Now. For a second night in a row, demonstrators filling the streets of cities all over the country protesting the new president-elect. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us for King 5 News at 10. I'm Amanda Grace. And I am David Espinosa Hall. So tonight it looks like Donald Trump is back on Twitter blasting those protesters angry about his election. First, we want to take you live to several of those cities right now. Let's move to Portland. Thousands of people are protesting for the third straight night. Police are now calling this a riot as protesters break business windows and throw projectiles at officers there. In Denver, meanwhile, hundreds of people have been marching peacefully for several hours now. From these live pictures, it appears that crowd has thinned out quite a bit. Meanwhile, let's take a look at Oakland, some of the largest anti-Trump rallies. And tonight, protesters were met by police in riot gear hoping to prevent the fires the graffiti the smashed windows from last night but we're told tonight that these protesters have been able to get onto interstate 580 creating uh, quite a traffic headache mm -hmm. well after staying off twitter for about a week it looks like donald trump took back control of his account and he's taking aim at those protesters he sent out this tweet tonight quote just had a very open and successful presidential election now professional protesters inside by the media are protesting. Very unfair. Last You're watching King 5 News. We're going to take a live look right now on the streets of Portland. Third night there of anti-Trump protests and police are calling tonight's events a riot. They describe extensive criminal and dangerous behavior. In fact, they were urging some of the peaceful protesters uh, to move to Pioneer Square, uh, telling them that they can go and exercise their freedom of speech there and advising the crowds that gas and flares are being prepared. Uh, we do know at last check that the crowds were heading up Broadway. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on this developing situation happening out of Portland. Uh, bring you the latest as we get it. And from Portland, we want to move now to Oakland. Some of the biggest protests have been happening right here. This is a vantage point from a helicopter up above. We have seen thousands of people in the streets there blocking highways. Now, this is the third night in a row for these protests, and it's all over Donald Trump being elected president of the United States of America. We've been seeing reports of hundreds of people out there, some of them being violent at times. Uh, we've also been reading reports that Police have had to use tear gas on some of these protesters as protesters. Some of them have been throwing rocks, breaking businesses, vandalizing things in that area. So um, it's a very tense situation right now. We will continue to keep you updated as our show continues tonight. Meanwhile. At this hour, we continue to watch protests happening across the country after the election of Donald Trump. This one is in Los Angeles, and uh, it looks uh, similar to what we saw just a little while ago. I uh, haven't seen any violence break out in L.A. Uh, for 
you know, from this vantage point above, it just looks like crowds of people uh, walking through the streets. There you can see them pulling out. But we don't see uh, any confrontations like we are seeing in Portland, which is what you're looking at now. And this has turned into more of a riot. Uh, some of the protesters have grabbed rocks. They've thrown them through windows. We've seen many businesses vandalized. Uh, police are telling the people who are not causing problems to congregate in one area so that they can start arresting uh, the so-called anarchists and get them off the street so they stop creating problems and damaging property. So a situation in Portland, we're going to keep our eye on it uh, as this shot moves on and update you throughout the newscast. For the second day in a row, people have taken to the streets nationwide to protest the man voted the next president of the United States. People have been demonstrating in dozens of cities almost around the clock since Donald Trump was declared the winner. People are furious, um, not just that, you know, the results of the election last night, obviously, but uh, the rhetoric of Donald Trump, which has been which has been completely appalling. Another reason for their anger, Hillary Clinton will likely win the nationwide popular vote. In California, Clinton received a whopping 60% of the popular vote and fueling a small vocal group of protesters carrying hashtag CalExit signs. While most protests have been peaceful, dozens of others have been arrested for setting fires, vandalism, assaulting officers, and unlawful assembly. People surrounded Trump buildings in Chicago and New York and in several states. Students organized walkouts. Now protesters continue their marches against President-elect Donald Trump. You are looking live now at Oakland, California. Last night, there are 30 people arrested, three officers injured, several fires set in the streets among about 7,000 protesters. Tonight, we're looking at that smaller crowd. It is a different scene so far, and it appears to be peaceful at this point. It's one of several cities that saw thousands of people take to the streets tonight. In Portland, protests turned violent. Police there called the demonstration a riot because of the escalating violence. One woman driving near the protest was attacked. Somebody used a bat to smash her windshield. Nearby, someone else spray painted the words capitalism kills on the side of a 7-Eleven. Police estimate some 4,000 people took part in the Portland protest tonight, and police are reporting some arrests. Now, President-elect Trump is reacting to these protests. In a tweet tonight, he said, just had a very open and successful presidential election. Now, professional protesters incited by the media are protesting very unfair. Seattle City Council member Shama Sawant is not backing down from her calls for more protests against the election of Donald Trump. The outspoken socialist helped organize this mostly peaceful march and rally last night. Thousands filled the streets downtown then and today. Sawan pushed back against criticism for her role in the demonstration, saying this is exactly the kind of stand her constituents elected her to take. I think it is our moral and political and historic duty to call for peaceful and powerful protests against Trump's agenda. It is perfectly safe for anybody and everybody to come to Seattle and anywhere else, you know, because we are standing against violence. We are standing against hate. Two powerful downtown business groups told us they have no problem with the marches as long as they remain peaceful. And